All right, welcome back. Let's talk about the Himalayas, or the Himalayas, as it's pronounced in some locations around the world. Come on now. Um, so the uh, Himalayas owe their creation to the colliding of a couple of uh, continental crustal slabs. So during the early Cretaceous, so this is back in the Mesozoic, or the country that is now India, uh, that landmass broke away from Gondwana and began moving north. Um, as it was moving north, oceanic lithosphere in front of it, oceanic crust, was consumed at a subduction zone along the southern margin of Asia. So along the Eurasian plate, um, uh, oceanic crust was being subducted and kind of pulling this continental landmass towards it. Um, the Indian plate moved northward for millions of years until it collided with the Eurasian plate about 10 million years ago. And the Himalayas are, are home to Mount Everest, as well as a number of the other highest elevation mountains in the world. So this is in the Cenozoic now. So this is after the breakup of Pangaea. Pan, uh, the Indian plate was connected to Africa as well as Antarctica and Australia. When everything was back together, it was kind of in this nook here with these things all connected. So as uh, uh, what, what do you, Pangaea was breaking up, so just keep an eye on India as it just gets pulled and then slams into Asia. As I go through these slides, boom! All right, so you get some big uh, uplift happening. Sorry, I was interrupted by a call from the doctor. But in any case, let me let me go backwards a little bit. Um, again, just keep an eyeball on uh, India, the Indian plate right here, as it moves northward, slamming into Asia, and then you get this giant uplift here, and this is what we now know as the Himalayan mountains, home to Mount Everest, again, uh, amongst many other of the world's highest peaks. So this is the Himalayan range, very sharp, very tall. These these are very young mountains, so only, you know, uh, the, the 10 million years old at the oldest. Remember, the Appalachians formed a long time ago. Appalachians, older mountains, ground down. These are very young mountains. Young mountains are tall, sharp peaks like you see here. So these are very, very relatively young mountains. They will be ground down over time, weathering and erosion. And of course, in the background there, the world's tallest peak, Mount Everest. Um, if you want to climb Mount Everest, uh, good luck. Uh, it takes years of preparation, well over a million dollars. You have to be there for like six months, so yeah, good luck. I mean, I would love to, but um, you can actually uh, trek to what's called base camp. And that's uh, the first camp you get at the bottom. You get to at the bottom of Mount Everest before you, you go up. You can do like a couple of weeks trek from um, the closest city all the way to um, uh, the base camp and, and back along the way. That I might do. But in any case. And then I think the chances of dying, it's like one in, one in like six people who attempt to climb Mount Everest die or, or something like that. It's It's pretty... You know, it's it's pretty ridiculous. It's it's pretty hard. And the further you go up, if you die, there's nothing they can do. There's not enough oxygen f to sustain any sort of activity other than just keeping yourself alive. So if you die, say for instance up here, that's where you stay. Unless you fall off, that's where you stay. No one's picking you up. No one's taking you down. No one has the energy to the oxygen to do that. So there's actually dead bodies littered along um, the path up. Uh, Mount Everest and they actually use those as like like s signs along the way so they know where to go anyway so Mount Everest is is big most people don't have a, a, a conception of, of how big it is um, at the top of Mount Everest there's 67 percent less oxygen than there is at at sea level so <clears throat> it's hard to breathe up there sometimes it, and that's why people need oxygen when they when they climb up it that's why if you die up there, no one has the energy or oxygen to take you down. Um, some of the tallest peaks uh, around us in the Rocky Mountains, which we'll talk about, Pikes Peak is just outside of Colorado Springs, where I used to live. Um, that's where uh, Garden of the Gods was that we looked at a couple of units back as well. Pikes Peak is about 14,000 feet in elevation, and that's a big mountain. 
and Mount Everest is more than twice that. So for a little local reference, if you want to talk about the Estrella Mountains, as in the Estrella Mountain Community College, they're actually called the Sierra Estrellas. Uh, the, the highest peak, um, oh, what's the name of the highest peak? I forget the name of the highest peak in the Sierra Estrellas, but if you're looking at, this, at the Estrella Mountains, the Sierra Estrellas, the highest peak is 4,512 feet in elevation. <clears throat> so consider Mount Everest is 29,000 feet. You know, to most people who grew up and live and really haven't traveled, in the, the, the Australia Mountains to our south, the Sierra Australias, those are big mountains. If you're going to try and climb it, it's a good day's hike up and down. You're not actually not allowed to, but, you know, it's a good day day or so hike to get all the way to the top if you wanted to. Um, but for reference, it would take about six and a half Sierra Australias, and you still wouldn't even make up the, the height of Mount Everest. It's a big mountain. It's big. It's really big. <clears throat> so in any case, um, in the Himalayas, though, there's no volcanism. All right? there's, during the Himalayan orogeny, there's no volcanism because the Indian plate, which is continental crust, is crashing into the Eurasian plate, which is also continental crust. So there's, uh, they're, they're the same density. So one of them, the Indian plate, it does not penetrate deeply enough because it's lighter in density to kind of melt and generate magma so things just kind of like crumple up there is a little bit of something maybe going down but not deep enough to melt and turn into magma and then make volcanoes so that's why we get basically just things crumpling up we get a lot of earthquakes in that area but but no volcanoes because we're at a continental to continental crust convergent boundary all right enough on the himalayas when we come back we'll talk about the circum pacific orogenic belt Sounds fancy. We'll break it down in easier terms. See you back here in just a second.